We've been hearing an awful lot of talk about the Holy Spirit before I start this morning. Uh, all I can tell you is, like Pastor Cliff, I don't debate about tongues and lack of tongues. We believe it's a gift from God. But what I would advise you to do is when your prayer time, ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And just leave the rest of it to the Lord. That should be your prayer today. Lord, fill me with your Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit. It's the third person of the Godhead that Jesus had to go so that he would come. Pastor Cliff made that very clear last week. He showed all the things that the Holy Spirit does. And has everything to our sermon today. And so if you could stand up, because we're going to read the text today. I'm so grateful for new monitors. I can even see it up from up here. Uh, we're going to be talking about this morning the first sermon of two sermons, which I'll be finishing, God willing, in two weeks. What it means to be holy. And today we're going to do part one. What it means to be holy. It's a very important sermon because a lot of people don't really understand it. And it's a mystery to some. And we kind of have a general idea we're going to be good people and please the Lord. And that's all true. But we're going to be talking about it this morning and next week and the week after. What it really means to be holy because God wants us to be holy. But it is a subject that also if people don't understand, can be very intimidating and even very condemning because some churches, we get a little self-righteous sometimes. We start imposing all kinds of stuff and we get into holiness, into how we act, how we dress, whatever. But it's not all about that this morning. So I hope that the two sermons are going to uh, enlighten your mind, help you understand what it really means to be holy. And the first part today may be new to some of you. I don't think it's going to be for most of you. But hold on, next time I preach, we'll be talking about holiness in practice and what that means. But when you see these two verses, for I, the Lord, am the one who brought you up from the land of Egypt, that I might be your God. Therefore, you must be holy, because I am holy. Then Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And you think of those two things. He says, first of all, I am the God that brought you out of Egypt, and because you must be holy, because I am holy. That's what he says. And then Christ, but you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. You may be seated this morning. Between this sermon and next week's sermon, next month, a uh, couple weeks from the day, I hope that we'll kind of understand what holiness really means. And we will find that it is very much within our reach, this side of heaven. But like I said, you know, even when I was a young kid and I was raised in a climate in the 40s of a real strong holiness movement, and everybody was concerned about how you look, how you dress, where you went, and it was kind of a frightening thing. And then when you read the scriptures that we're to be holy like God and that I'm supposed to be perfect like my heavenly father, that sound like a, a losing proposition because I knew that there was no way I could reach that perfection. And so I'm hoping that with the sermons we've prepared given by the Lord that he's going to make it very clear to us. To be very truthful, I really prayed over this one because I said, I hope our people can understand what I'm going to share today. It's simple, but in this part of holiness, it's, not, it's a part that's not always taught directly pertaining to holiness. We talk about it, but we don't recognize that it is half of the idea of holiness, what we're going to share this morning. And so the scriptures, again, can be very intimidating if we don't understand it. But God, Jesus, wouldn't have said it if it wasn't doable. Right, right. So that's where we have to come to terms with that, there, that there is a way to reach the perfection that he wants. And so we're going to be looking at that in the next week's sermon that comes. We'll be talking about it again, holiness and practice, which we, I was raised on that menu. And a lot of you have heard it throughout your years in pertaining to what holiness. But I think today, part one might be something new to some of you, and I hope it will be helpful to you. It's another part of holiness. Being holy. 
is the idea of being whole body soul and spirit as human beings being whole okay it shows when God is in control of our lives how his presence affects every realm of our being body soul and spirit when we were saved yes the sin question was dealt with our names have been written in the book of life we're bound for heaven but there's another part of the idea of holiness that has to do with wholeness now as people on earth so that we can be holy before an unbelieving word holiness right now I had it written down it affects every part of our being if we allow him to our demeanor our conduct our relationships our choices our physical our spiritual and our emotional health the Holy Spirit when we looked at Nehemiah walls down gates broken down enemy coming and going it's a picture of a person's life where the enemy has come in it's also a picture of people's lives who accepted the Lord but there's some work there's some rebuilding that needs to be done in their lives the Holy Spirit desires to bring us to complete personhood I want you to hear that today we're not just holy people crying and you know weeping before the Lord and church and anything but he wants us to be well-rounded people the way God designed us to be he wants us to bring us to complete personhood in every realm of our body that's what he wants to see in his people now I realize that all of us at one time or another the enemy does come in and he does play havoc and he does disrupt things in our lives it happens to all of us if we're not careful it happens the enemy will come on the attack but we know when that happens if we're whole if we cry out to the Lord that if we have a God that will bring us through those things we don't come unglued we don't have any temporary insanity we don't fall apart we don't come unhinged because we're whole in Jesus Christ so you know the sportscaster that helped build up Muhammad Ali how many of you old timers remember Howard Cosell wasn't he something else he used to say something that seemed to make sense to me when I think about the Christian walk because we do take our hits sometimes and we fall righteous men fall seven times but gets up again he used to have a term that really seems so apropos to this, what I'm trying to say today that he says this team bends but it doesn't break I think that's very good to hear we bend sometimes because we're under a sail we feel the attack of the enemy he, he affects us to a certain point there's sometimes when I worry about some things that I shouldn't but we don't break we don't come apart we still remain intact because we have God working throughout our lives and so again the Holy Spirit desires to bring us to complete personhood physically spiritually emotionally as Christian people holiness okay to make it clear we're going to go to point one the word holy comes from an old English word I think it was a 12th century word hal h-a-l it means hail hearty holy whole to be complete holiness the word holy yeah, you Bible students out there, it's good for you to take notes. I'm very proud of some of them out there that go to the Bible college. <laughs> Hail, healthy, whole, holy. When we were saved, Jesus washed away all of our sins, took it away. We were bound for heaven. That part of us was fixed by Jesus on the cross. But I want you to know this morning, along with the salvation of our souls, God, through the Holy Spirit, through the Word and prayer, has the ability to bring wholeness to every part of our being so that we don't live in continuous dysfunction. 
There's supposed to be a change in our lives. When we talked about it has to do with our demeanor. Are we somewhat predictable in our demeanor or do we run hot and cold with people? It's something we need to work about. Are we easy to fly off the handle? How about our conduct? How about dealing in our relations? I know some people that are filled with the Spirit and speak in tongues, but they don't get along with anybody. And everybody knows it. And that's the part of holiness that don't have. But that's the part of holiness that everybody sees. They don't see you speaking in tongues in your closet. They don't see you worshiping in your shower. But they see how you walk through your neighborhood. And don't get your feelings hurt if we're running out of money today because we spend more than we make. That's a problem that we have. We, we need some work done in us as people. If I can just get this clear. I told Susan, I'm a little bit worried about the sermon today because we spiritualize holiness so much. We forget the practical, but it's the practical part that people see every day on the job, in the neighborhood, wherever you go. He wants to bring us whole. Our right now on earth living experience. To be complete. Hail. Forgiven of our sins, yes. But he wants to be wholeness. We were saved instantly. But restoration and healing in our personal lives needs to be completed. The book of Nehemiah that we studied with Brother Carl, he did an excellent job. There was a rebuilding job. We're just talking more than concrete and adobe. We're talking about the building of lives. That's really the picture of Nehemiah too. The consoler, the Holy Spirit comes to rebuild. And so many who have come to the Lord had the sin question dealt with. But they're still damaged. Physically, emotionally, because of past sin. They're saved, but they're still not whole. We all know some people like this that really love Jesus, but something important in their life is not right. And it's not God ordered. It's not what God intended. This is what I'm talking about today. Yes. We call that baggage from our past. God, the Holy Spirit, wants to rebuild our lives to take care of that baggage. Right. But I know there's a lot of Christians that are going to church. Try this out. They love the Lord, they're saved. Thank God for that. But they have envy in their hearts. They have jealousy in their hearts. They have unforgiveness in their hearts. They're not whole. I've even had to watch that part of me also. Make sure that I bring all that stuff out that don't belong. There needs to be wholeness. There needs to be healing there that is really evidence in our lives. Christian counselors probably have a whole ton of Christians that come to their office dealing with the problems that they have within their own lives. These are wonderful people who love Jesus. But either emotionally, something in the past, something right now that they can't seem to fix, they're there to be dealt with. And God is there to bring them to healing too. And He wants them healed. He wants us delivered. He wants us to be moving on. You know, to make it clear, all of you older brothers like myself, back in the 50s, we could tune up our own cars. We had eight cylinders, a lot of space underneath the hood, right, Robert? All we needed back then to tune up my old 49 Ford was to go to the auto parts, get some points, a condenser, a distributor cap, and a timing light. Tune up my own car. We could even put our own brakes back then. But they used to have a term when you talk to mechanics... She's firing on all eight. You know what that means? It's like that piano when it's all tuned. Firing on all 88. Talk about pressure. I don't know how many tons of pressure is on a good piano. There's tons of pressure on it and it still don't break. It's whole. It's complete. But what I'm saying is they say it's firing on all eight, which means the car is running the way the manufacturer intended to. What we're talking about today and talking about being whole and being complete as part of holiness is the manufacturer, our God who created us, didn't create us to live in dysfunction and emotionally troubled perennially or in defeat perennially or broke perennially. He wants to bring us to a place where we're functioning in our personhood whole firing on all eight 
Sup sometimes we get a miss though, right? One cylinder doesn't fire. That's when we used to tune it up. But then the Holy Spirit comes in and says, okay, I want to touch you here. I'm going to heal you here. You've called it to me. And he brings us back to wholeness. I'm never telling the church that I've never struggled myself. I've been through some hard times. I've been through some very depressing times. But by the power of God, I've ever to bring it back to healing because I can count on the Holy Spirit to come and direct me. So, God wants us to fire on all eight. And he wants the world to see a church that is firing on all eight. That we're really God-directed. He is the one that's directing our lives. And he wants us to be made whole. Okay, and so we have to go to our second thought this morning. We have a tripartite nature. We, there's three parts of us. Body, soul, and spirit. Our physical body. It's getting older every day. But God is good. All the time. We have our soul, which is the seat of our emotions, our mind, how we think, the choices we make, how we respond when good things happen, how we respond when difficult things happen. That is our soul. Then we have the spirit. That was the part of us that was closed off until we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the part of us. It's when it says we're saved, the spirit bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. That's how we know we're saved. You feel it in your heart. And so our physical bodies. We don't talk too much about that in church. But, you know, it's, that's us too, you know. We are the temple of the Lord. I'm going to be very careful here because I, like the rest of you, have to diet. And I love food too. But as Christians, we don't abuse our bodies anymore like we did maybe before we knew the Lord. People that are putting drugs and alcohol into the system and, and destroying themselves. We, we don't do it. We've got a doctor back there saying amen. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> our bodies. Half of our illness we could cure ourselves. I remember there was a, a story of our pastor in Hawaii. Uh, this is not a very good one, though, but because uh, I'm old now. There was this old lady who would come up, elderly lady would come up every Sunday for prayer. About over 90. And the pastor said one day, he kind of joked, he said, I'm going to pray for you. You know your problem? You're just old. That's how you feel when you're 90. But below 90, we, we discipline through the certain disciplines that we do and certain regimens that we do, and you know what they are. I'm not going to bring it up. My wife was trying them, some of them last night. God bless you, dear. And doesn't she look great, too? I'm a, I'm a blessed man. Now she's a beautiful lady. All the way our bodies we develop healthy habits and disciplines and we have a God who sustains and heals some of us minority people we were born with certain high blood pressure diabetes possibilities some genetic instruction that we didn't ask for but it's there so we have to be very careful in the way we eat and try to exercise and stuff to take care of the house of the Lord our physical bodies so we'll touch that a little bit and then we have our spirits where that's the part of us, like I said, that will open up to God uh, when we know Him, the part that communicates with God, the part of us that was brought to life when we were saved, born again. Colossians 4.12, I think we have it up there in the New King James Version. Uh, I'm moving a little bit ahead of you, Cliff the Third. We'll go back in a minute to another one. But 4.12, Epaphras, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always laboring in prayer. He was a prayer warrior, laboring in prayer for all of you in prayers that you may stand perfectly and complete in all the will of God. Yes. That we would be complete, that we would be holy, that we would be whole, W-H-O-R-E, complete in the Lord. So that is our spirits. That's the part of it that cries out to the Lord. When, died, when our Christ died, he commended his spirit unto the Lord and said, it is finished. Standing perfectly and complete. Complete. Holy. Complete. In all the will of God. 
And then we're going to get to the souls. That's really where a lot of the action is. Because the soul is the part of us that has to do with our mind, our thinking, our decisions, our emotions. That's that part of us. And that's where we get into the most problems sometimes. Because it is that part of us that reacts to the things outside of us or the things that we're carrying inside that maybe we should or maybe we need to get rid of. It's in that soul area. And there was a pastor that once said, he was in this church and he said, Christians do not allow your mind, which is part of your soul, to become the devil's playground. That's what he does. If we don't keep our minds clear, if we're not whole in him, if we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to minister into that part of us, the enemy brings all kinds of thoughts. He brings de defeated thoughts. You're so awful, you'll never make it. You'll never amount to anything. He brings it to our mind. You're going to the wrong church. Or you're a hypocrite. He does all that kind of stuff. Or he does even worse. He puts feelings of jealousy and envy towards other people in our hearts. And even bitterness that is not from the Lord. And that's what the enemy does in our mind if we allow him to stay there. But if we have the mind of Christ, we filter that stuff out. The Holy Spirit moves into our beings and he purifies that part of us that we don't carry illness. One of the things that I have done, and I've tried my best, uh, all of us have people that have been kind of hard us in the past or difficult or perhaps even hurt us. But I've tried very hard not to carry any unforgiveness and bitterness. I let it go. I know Christians today, not in this church, but in the churches, that are still filled with bitterness over stuff that happened 30 years ago and has affected their life. They have no joy. They are not whole. They go to church. They speak in tongues. They sing. They go to the Bible studies. But people can tell they're not right because they can sense it when there's something in there. And that's the part when they're not whole. It doesn't change that part of them. And that's what we need to work at today. Keep a short list. People can't forgive. Do you know very much that when you forgive somebody, you not only set them free, but you set yourself free? I've seen people die with bitter spirits for decades. And I know they were never, ever really happy because that root, root of bitterness sprung up and defiled many. But it destroyed them. If you have that in your spirit today, your soul, you're not whole yet. Yes, you're saved. You need to ask God to clean up that part of you. And I say it in love. You'll be the one that will be blessed if you do that. Praise the God. And you move the clock back so I can barely see. Oh, yeah, I'm still okay. <laughs> Where's the clock? <laughs> so, so getting back to this thing, I want you to get it today. Being holy. Acting normal, let's say. Complete personhood, the way God wants us to be. It's for our own good. That's the way we were designed. The Creator knows how to make us function in fire and all eight. And we just have to come under His direction and say, Lord, cleanse this, my mind, my heart, my spirit. Lord, with my physical body, help me to do things I should be doing. With my spirit, help me to always continue to cry out to you so I'll be functioning and moving the way I'm supposed to. The part that communicates with God. And I'm going to bring it to a close this morning because we've got communion. Seeing holiness in its broader sense, to be whole, seems pretty inviting to me. As opposed to being condemned by I have to be perfect like God. We'll cover that in two weeks, how we can meet God's level of perfection. Not like him, but how we'll be able to do enough on this earth to qualify to be perfect through him. It's called the atonement. But you know, church today, God wants us to be whole. Body, soul, and spirit. To be praying and reading the Bible, but having that work in the different areas of our lives, in our physical bodies and in our hearts and in our minds. And if there's any dysfunction there, the Holy Spirit wants to come in and heal that for your own good. You'll be so blessed. Amen. You'll be so blessed.
I've thought about this sermon throughout my life because being as a, being a Pentecostal believer, we were so strong on holiness. But I have to tell you, I've seen some strange people come in the church that if I didn't know they were saved, I'd wonder if they really were by word or conduct. Nobody's perfect church, I know that. And I'm thinking, that's not what God intended of his people. When he talks about having a chosen generation, a royal peace, to call out of darkness, he wants to be people that reflect the life and the presence and the power of God healthy. I keep going to my doctor friend Carl. Doctors want to restore people to health. I was there with Brother Wayne yesterday, and the doctor was giving him some very good advice to bring him back to health. God wants us to be whole body, soul, and spirit. So it's not just, I pray the Lord, yeah, I'm trying to read the Bible. But it's asking Him to change you where you need to be changed. To submit to His change, what He wants to do for you. For it is your own good and, and the good of all those that are around you. This is the holiness that God wants to see demonstrated before Him in the world. The Holy Spirit, whole in every part of my life, not perfect, but where it's messed up, we're working on it, we're improving. I can't be perfect like he is, but I can show the perfection a God-ordered life on earth can be. There is stuff I can do. Through his power, I can do this. We get back to the people of Nehemiah. Every part of their lives were in disarray when they suffered for their sin. It was not just the walls, the physical walls and their houses and the temple that was torn down. They were dispirited, depressed, fighting among one another. And what was worse, the enemy was coming and going in their life. This is a picture of the enemy coming and going in the life of a Christian. He shouldn't be doing that. Nehemiah said, you have no right, no legal inheritance here. We talked about putting our foot down when the enemy tries to come in our lives and mess things up. But the, the sad thing about it is God wanted a holy people that were whole. And so we've got the Jews of Jerusalem that were anything but whole. Their lives were messed up. You see what I'm trying to say, church? The pagan people didn't really see them when they were worshiping and offering the sacrifice. They saw some of it, but they saw them real live up close, what they were like. And they sure didn't look like the people of God, did they? They didn't. What does the world see in us today? They don't see us here in worship. They don't see me when I'm fasting. They don't even see me when I'm praying, but they see me when I'm on the street. They see me how I treat my wife. They see me how I treat my kids. My relatives see me. The world sees us. And that's the holiness that God wants in us so we can show another song we used to sing in the back of the day, what a difference he makes in my life. What a difference he made in our lives. And so that's what we're trying to say today. Part one of holiness is being whole, intact. As my dad would say, not out of commission. And those parts that need fixing, we bring them to wholeness again. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Being visibly holy, whole, before all the people that are around us. What's good about it is God, like Nehemiah, stands there to bring healing into your life today. You don't have to stay that way that you have a problem with that. You don't have to continue to be depressed. You don't have to be continually to be anxious. You don't have to be continually worrying about stuff. You certainly can't, don't have to be continually full of anger and rage and unforgiveness and bitterness in your spirit that's making you sick and will even kill you if you don't watch it. He wants to heal you from that and make you whole. When Jesus came into your life, the possibility on earth to be the way the Creator destined us to be is ours. And I encourage you to pursue that today. To be holy, whole, intact. <laughs>